Hello everyone, I thought I would bring out my charming curiosity. So this is my beautiful charming curiosity and what you get, it is a system in itself and you get this lovely stretchy jersey bat or spandex some people like to call it. You also get the matching cards and I'll explain that in a second. And you get in it, oops, you get three dice and you also get 18 specific charms. So this system, the way I've got this working is we have three rows of 18 and each row is a particular colour and numbered from one to six. So we've got pink one to six, green and blue. Now you'll notice the cards are also coloured pink, blue and green. So these cards actually mirror each of the pictures on the mat. So this system I called Curiosity and the reason I called it Curiosity is it's like a soft reveal and you'll see how and what I mean by saying that. Now these 18 charms here, they also match all the symbols that are on the mats and the symbols on the cards. Now there's my money one, so there is my whoops money charm that matches it. So we're effectively not reading 18 places. We're actually reading three times 18. And this is how we do this. So I'm just going to do, let's say what's ahead just for the week. And this is a great way you can use this. So, and the way I say soft reveal is, we actually place your cards face down. Now I am a card flipper, not a rotator turner. And you can also do it like this if you please. And it doesn't really matter. You might want to be numerical order, um, but in this house it's a little bit of throw up a box of rice and try and gather all the grains into one pile. And so we tend to do things a little bit differently here. So what we must remember, we don't have a lot here to learn. It's not very complex. We look at the coloured rows and the numbers. So I often say tilt that first card to the side when you are learning your rows. And it's just really to memorise what colour row you are in. Now the three dice represents the 18 cards as well. So you've got a couple of ways you can start this and it's traditional card chaining. So I can choose if I wanted to say, okay, we're looking at love, we can start in the house of heart. If you were looking about uh, money, we could start in the house of money. If you're looking about your job, you can start in the house of the castle because tower and castle in T symbology means career. So there's lots of others. You've got home and family, you've got luck and opportunity. So uh, all that's written in the book. But what the system is good for is, even if you don't want to start in any particular, your three dice is where we start. So I've got six and four is 10 and two. So it tells me I'm starting in position 12. Here is number 12, remember, three rows of six. So we are now turning the cards. And by doing this, I am not only reading this card, but I'm reading the mat, which is the other card, but we call the mat as the house and the card that's on top of it is the description of the house. So the scales is about what's balance, what's equality, what is it that's fair. And sometimes it comes down to uh, rules and regulations uh, or when you're feeling obligated to do things. So I've got the cross sitting over that. So it would tell me there's some tough things coming up in the week of head and it could be around some decision making that may be financial about balance and rules and regulations that I really might not like, particularly with I've got the cross on there. So this card now determines the next space that I go to. So I have 
pink teapot, so a pink row, and it's number two. So we turn this one. And there we have the shooting star, or the comet, or the star. All mean the same thing. And that now, as you can see where we're going, we've got the cross house, which has told us to go here. And we've got the star that sits over the cross. So go back to your sentence. Here would tell me some tough things that I have to face or decisions that need to be made. But there's when we go to the toughness and the star is over it. So the star actually is a more positive card because it tells me good things will come out of this. Even though the decisions may be a little tougher, the star is a ray of light. It is our positivity. And it can literally mean my positive attitude will help pass these decisions and things that I've got to do that may be a bit tough. So now we've got a blue teapot number two. Blue row, number two. And we've got the castle. Now the castle is, like I said, around business or um, career path. Now, as you all know, Tea with Karen is my business. It is my career path. And a tower to that would tell me about successes. And when I see the star and the castle come in together, it's almost like put it out to the universe and business will take off, literally. We have then number one and it's pink. So we're going up here to the tower and we've got the house. How fun is that? I know you wouldn't guess it, would you? House and car castle together, home based business. It can sometimes too, though, tell me where I may be feeling a little bit restricted by the four walls and the business itself. Really, it probably should tell me, Karen, you need a house extension for the stock. But it doesn't tell me that. <laughs> I wish. So we go green row now, number five. So we've got green row, number five. We go into the house. The heart. That's lovely over the house because it does tell me a house that is full of love, passion for what I do. Again, that's the passion in the business, which it is for you guys who may follow me and know me for several years. This is my passion, is tea reading. My idea of tea reading is not just a traditional cups but it's learning tea symbology in all its forms whether it's charms cards teacups and so on so it is very much a passion the three green we're still in the green row number three we've got the sword so the sword here is cutting the heart. So it tells me what is it that is hurting me or what is it that maybe I need to eliminate. So it's always interesting what the next card is when it's on the sword. The key. Now that's a really interesting one because it tells me, am I cutting off opportunities for myself? So it's very interesting and it's almost like there, I'd say, and you may get these in when you do your readings with this set, is uh, you are probably there and it would tell me don't self-sabotage good things because a key is about doorways or pathways of new opportunities. Blue row four, so we're in our blue row, number four. The camel. So the camel there would tell me if I stick to the road that I'm going, be persistent, no matter how bumpy the ride, and you couldn't get any more bumpy ride than the last two years with COVID, but that is actually a good thing. So it does tell me stick with the program, no matter the ride, because this persistence is literally key. And I know that sounds really cornball, doesn't it? So we go to five, pink row, up here. And we come back to my scales. Now, this is what ends it. And again, it would tell me the same thing. Everything literally will all unfold as it should do. My big thing here, I would read, again, it's like writing a sentence of try not to um, feel the hurt or self-sabotage any opportunities that come my way because my persistence here brings everything back to a good balance. It's actually a really interesting reading. So when we see all these cards that didn't turn over and people say, but what's under them? The biggest no, 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 no smacks bad is don't 
turn them over and don't be tempted to peek because it tells me these cards that didn't turn over, they are not relevant to what I needed to know. And it is really fate is in our hands. Now, these charms, what you can do with your charms is if you want to add another layer of information. Now, there's a couple of ways you can do it. You could just go mix, mix, mix and drop and scatter and see where they land. You could go along and mix, mix, mix and draw out one charm over every card that you have drawn. Or you might say, okay, the sword is a difficult one. What are the difficult areas? And you would then use your charms over it. So I'm going to do that because there, that is the toughest card that I have turned over. And the toughest card is on my heart. So I will, like I said, mix. Normally I just put these in a teacup, but you can keep them in your purse. So... Again, I've got the heart. So there would tell, it's very interesting what comes out. And uh, I know a lot of people say they love to hear me how I read because how I read, you also learn. And when I see again, the heart is coming out. So it would tell me here something that is emotional that may throw me off course because I've got the heart on heart. And I still come up with the camel though, which is still telling me, if something there is hurting the heart, I still must soldier forward and not let things get to me. So this is how you read curiosity. But like I said, do not be tempted, big smacks, if you try to want to peek under those cards because they are totally not necessary to use. So I hope that helps you learn a little bit more about my curiosity. And at the moment, curiosity is classified as a card system. And all my card systems at the moment have free shipping. And that goes for international as well. So click on the XC links at the bottom. Subscribe so you don't miss me. Don't forget to hit the bell. And I'll see you in the next video.